I don't know. This is going to be different. I just had this thing pop into my head. You ever had a rap pop into your head? Not a rap, sorry. <laughs> well, it's time to make that change. People of the world today are fading. All of us have our ups and downs. You better think about it or you won't be around. What we need is a little bit of love. Sent by one from heaven up above. Take it from me, it's simple and plain. This ain't no game, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> What a time to just drop in there, huh? <laughs> yes. Father, thank you so much for today. Give you the praise and the glory for your healing power. Laughter does good like a medicine. And I thank you for spreading that medicine around. Father, we thank you that the expectancy level is rising even now. Lord God, I give you the praise and the glory that you're bringing us into that revelation of who we are in you. And Lord God, I thank you for encouraging your people to step more in. Just step more in today for you're faithful to show us who you are as we press into you. And God, we just want more. And I just proclaim more over everybody here today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and stand with us this morning. Amen. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run. The fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song, cause you are good. You're never gonna let me down. 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 You're never gonna let me down.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. No, he's not. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. In any situation, you're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. in grace and mercy there is nowhere we can hide from your love you are steadfast never failing you are faithful all creation is in awe of who you are you're the healer of the sick and the broken you are comfort for every heart that mourns. Our King and our Savior forever. For eternity we will sing of all you've done. For eternity we will sing of all you've done. Go! 
before us in them. Thank you, Father. He is with us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you this morning.
the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome. We will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony.
for some of you, there's a song that's been stirring for a long time. The Lord's ready to move. You just need to let him. Just step out of the way. Trust him. Just let that stir right out of you. And watch, watch everything around you change. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. just going to sing one more song and just focus on Jesus and how much you love him. Thank you, Father, and all that he's done for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
This all started out, says the Lord, because I wanted kids. Says the Lord, there's always been something trying to keep me from having my kids. But I'm truly telling you today that that something is being moved out of the way, says the Lord. And my kingdom is expanding, says the Lord. Things are accelerating, says the Lord. Things are finally moving and clicking in my body. It might not look like it to you, says the Lord, but I would tell you that my eye sees the finished work. My eye sees things complete. My eye sees freedom and liberty in my spirit. My eye sees a completion in you, each and every one of you, that you're filled to overflowing with my presence and my power. I would have you to know today, says the Lord, that my kingdom is increasing, my children are increasing, the number of my children are increasing every day, every minute, every hour, says the Lord. It is increasing. Do not look to the voices that would say it's all bad because I do not see the bad, says the Lord. I am seeing the increase. And all you have to do is step into the increase, says the Lord, and you'll see the increase of my spirit and my anointing and my power and my love and my compassion on the inside of you because that's where I dwell, says the Lord. That's where I'm at, says God. I'm in you. I'm on you. I'm around you, says the Lord. There is no darkness, says says the Lord around you unless you turn out the light. There is no darkness around you and then because in me there is no darkness. There is no shadow of turning. I am light and I will fill all with light. Therefore arise and be strong and know, says the Lord, that my heart is upon you. Know that my love is upon you. Know that I am upon you and that I'm leading you and guiding you into all truth. And I'm showing you things to come. Hold on to those things that I show you. And know that my hand is upon you to show you my salvation, says the Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. You, Lord God. Now, there's, there's some hard issues that I think the Lord wants to deal with here today and the thing the phrase that came to me was release the grief and there's people here that have been holding on to grief for way too long and it's whether it's grief over a lost child a lost loved one something and it doesn't even necessarily have to deal with the death of somebody it's grief that life didn't turn out the way you thought it should have or life didn't turn out for your kids the way you thought it should have or like, but you've been carrying this grief, and it's been weighing on you, and it's a, it's, it's a hindrance to the, to the whole move of God that he wants to move in you. And if you would just slip up your hand and say, I've been carrying it way too long, and today's the day I want to get rid of it. You know, and just do it. Just, just, just raise your hand, and don't be ashamed, because there, I believe there's a real anointing to release the grief today. And it's, you know, if you if, it, if somebody around there sees a hand raised up, just step by them, get by them today, and stand by. I'm not going to call people up, but if you see somebody with their hand up, get, get around them and agree, because I think there's going to be a real anointing to release the grief. And it's, it's you know, it, it's, uh, it's very important. I just felt like it was very important for, the, for what God wants to do. And anybody else that, ha if you don't, ha if your hand is up and you don't have somebody with you, just wave a hand and say, I, I'm, I'm by myself still. <laughs> One in the back over here, somebody in the back, right back there that needs somebody to get over there by them. 
glory to God. And just purpose in your heart. You, you know, there comes a point where you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know what I mean? And you just got to make that choice that, God, I'm going to let you. It says, the Bible says, cast all your care on him because he cares for you. Cast all your grief on him because he cares for you. Cast all your failures on him because he cares for you. Cast all of that on him. Don't let it weigh you down anymore. Are you ready? Are you ready to cast it down off? Because you'll walk out of here different. There's an anointing here for release. And just let it release. Just let it go. If you feel like you want to cry, just let it cry. I don't care. You know, God don't care. But just let it go. Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, we give you the praise and the glory that yours is joy unspeakable and full of glory. And you determine that you want us to walk in that joy. The kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Father, and I break the power in the name of Jesus off the spirit of grief. I break the power off of it now in Jesus' name. And I speak release over this whole audience, Lord God. The audience, Lord God, that's looking unto you, the author and the finisher of their faith. That looking unto you, Father, the God of their salvation, Lord God. I give you the praise and the glory that I just release that anointing there to release the grief. Release the grief and let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Just turn it over to him. Say, Father, I give you all the grief right now. I just give it all to you. Give you the praise and the glory. Give you the praise and the glory. And I speak healing now, Father. Healing over all of those wounds, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Every wounded heart, every broken heart. Father, your, your word says you're the healer of the brokenhearted. So I speak that all the pieces of the heart begin to come back together in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, that emptiness that's on the inside because of this grief. Lord God, we speak an infilling of the Holy Ghost to that emptiness. Even now, in the, just the, the anointing's really strong. Anyway, it's right here, it's strong. So you just re receive it right now. Receive that filling in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, I give you the praise and the glory. I give you the praise and the glory. I give you the praise and the glory. Father, I don't want anybody here walking out the same, Lord God. Mighty God, just let that change take place in their whole life and their whole attitude. And I thank you, Father. I thank you for increasing your family even today. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And I don't want anybody leaving and or today without knowing that you're loved. When we were praising, just the overwhelming love of the Father was just so so strong and evident, and and He loves you so very much. And something we don't always think of, He takes joy in you. He takes joy in you, and this. We just don't have any idea really how much he loves us and how he cares for us and that he, that he enjoys his children. And so in the name of Jesus, just to, to add on to that, we just thank you, Lord, for that love and we receive that love. We receive your love. Lord God, that, that there isn't any ugliness in us that that stops you from loving us, that you've washed that away and you've declared us righteous and that you look upon us with love and joy and, Lord, you care for your children. So we receive your love this morning. We receive that. It just melts into us. Thank you, Lord. We just receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We thank you for doing this thing. And, Lord God, that we have a new revelation and a more revelation of how much you love us and care for us. We praise you and give you glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for just touching and ministering. We thank you for touching lives in the name of Jesus because you loved us so much. 
praise God. I thank you that you didn't stop loving us at the cross, that your love just is beyond what we could even, can't even imagine what it's, how great it is, but you love us so much, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise that beautiful name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We have a couple of testimonies. One of the things that is happening is people are getting healed. And we've always had that, but praise God, it's it just like, oh. And uh, first off, uh, Manuela, stand still. You want to come up? If, if Tony wants to come, he can. You remember, was it last week? Was it, okay, last week, uh, Doug had a word of knowledge about somebody's ear. And you, you took it. Took you received it. it. I took it. So you want to give the rest of the story? Yes. Um, in 2002, I had a really bad car accident, and um, they life watched me to Wichita and whatnot. I broke a bone behind my ear, which they said that I won't ever be able to hear anymore. So I've been going in and out to the doctors and whatnot. They've been saying that in 2020, they're going to come out with a bionicle ear. So if I really feel like I need my ear back, I would qualify for that. So last Sunday when I was in church, um, Doug had this word where he was saying, you know, somebody having an issue with the ear or whatever. And so I raised my hand for it. And yesterday, I was really attacked by Satan. It's like, oh, so many people prayed over you. It's never going to happen. And, and you're just going to have to go to the doctor. And, and I just, in the name of Jesus, I know I'm healed. And uh, so I had this pressure on this ear, and I just keep pushing around on it and thinking this pressure is going to go away and whatnot. So I have this thing where when you raise kids and you need these extra five minutes, you lay on your good ear and you don't hear nothing out of your so-called bad ear anyhow. <laughs> Just five more minutes. I'll get up and I'll make coffee and I'll make breakfast and it'll all be good. She does that all the time for me. Well, <laughs> it didn't happen this morning. I lay on his arm with my right ear and I'm thinking, well, he's playing with the grandkids, which are staying over, so I can't hear nothing. Well, yeah, God proved me wrong. <laughs> I heard everything he said, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can hear this. I can hear this. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You. I just want to share something with about my wife. She is the most beautiful and humble woman in the whole world. When this happened, this accident, um, she actually went to heaven, and she stood before Jesus. And Jesus says, I have another job for you on earth. And I want to praise him for that. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I, I think Doug, he, it was the, he said the left ear. Yeah. And uh, so praise God. And uh, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And we have another testimony. Uh, Troy, I don't know if Carrie wants to come too or not. She said, go on, go on. Um, many of you uh, may know Troy Miller, and Troy uh, really was instrumental on helping get Super Sunday and all of that, and, and God's been doing a lot of things in his life. Amen? And so he just has a testimony also. Yeah, I've, let's see. Two weeks ago, we were at the praise and prayer night at the assembly. And, and first of all, if you're not attending those, I encourage you to attend because the Holy Spirit's just really moving in unity through the pastors and those nights. And uh, it's just very powerful. Um, one of the pastors, uh, it was either Aaron or Pastor Dwight, said, uh, if you want to see every healing tonight, come forward. And Dave and Sandy were up there praying over people. And I was just sitting there. My wife gave me that nudge, get up there. <laughs> And uh, so I went forward, and uh, um, Dave and Sandy started to pray over me. And um, as you know, they're so filled with the Holy Spirit. And um, I've had bad knees. I used to run long distance, a lot of cross country and stuff, and uh, I walk a lot of miles at work. And so uh, I've had two tears of my meniscus in my right knee probably for four or five years that I've just ignored. And as they started to pray, my knee started to shake and turn and move. And I could no longer stand. I had to lie down. That the Holy Spirit was coming over me that strong. At first, though, I remember standing there with a little bit of doubt. And it was either Dave or Sandy said, Troy, just relax and open up and receive. Stop, stop doubting. 
And the minute you start to expect, God starts to move. And I feel that when I walk in here, you guys. There's an expectancy here that I haven't felt in a lot of churches. So the power of the Holy Spirit, if you get in His presence and you just believe, He says if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. And God's wanting to move mountains right now in this community. And I can tell you the other night I was downstairs studying and I ran up my stairs and I hadn't been able to run up my stairs for a long time. And I didn't realize that I did it. And I got to the top. I said, I just ran up the stairs. So I went back down, turned around, <laughs> ran up again. And, and my knee isn't great. So pr Amen. praise God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. that awesome and then uh, uh you have a testimony yeah yeah terry right no jerry terry that's terry yeah yeah uh so i'm jared i'm from california i'm 19 years old uh, i just drove out here for no reason really and uh <laughs> I got in trouble out here three days in, and I went to Barton County Jail for 90 days. And then I got out here, and uh, I was having a hard time finding a job because I'm a felon now, it's at least what I thought it was. And uh, I was starting to get really stressed about it. And then um, I just started praying about it, and then I start work Monday at Quality Well Service at $14 an hour. So, Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise. Isn't that good? God's answering prayer. Well, and, and uh, at um, one of the pastors that exercises with us, he, he's had a, uh, uh, has a, had a uh, heart problem. And uh, it was very evident that when we exercise it, you know, he doesn't feel good. And his heart races and, you know, he still does this stuff. And, and um, but anyway, uh, it's a long story of his, his journey but praise God the other day at the pastor's meeting, he got prayer, and, and uh, he couldn't stand up either. <laughs> and, uh, and anyway, God just really touched him. And in an exercise class on Friday, he came in and was testifying. You know, he said he's felt good. He hadn't felt good in, for, a long for a long time. And he did the exercise, and he was testifying at the end, and he looked good. I mean, and we're all witnesses of how he's acted. Wow. And God's healed his heart. And uh, praise God for that. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, you know, God is, uh, you know, uh, that should be everyday normal for, for Christians. And praise God for what he's doing. But it's good to hear those things because we hear, you know, it says, by well, the word of our testimony. You know, that song we sang, you know, as we declare out the good deeds of God, it, it's a testimony and, uh, and, you know, it, it just pushes the darkness back. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And uh, the revelation. And, you know, there's a lot of other healings going on and people being touched and ministered to. And, uh, you know, so we just, we uh, praise God for the move of the Holy Spirit and how he ministers. And, you know, uh, you don't have to receive a word or uh, that kind of thing. You can just pray and ask. And, uh, and, Jesus has done that for every person. He's no respecter of persons, but those testimonies bring, bring us to a point of knowing how good he is. Amen? Amen? Well, let's jump into the Word of God. Oh, my goodness, it's core. We're going to have to rush through this, so I may just, I may just tell the story. Uh, uh, I got this this morning kind of late, and, I, and I, a lot of times I like to type up my notes. Well, there wasn't any typing, so they're just scribbled here, so... Uh, Hopefully, I didn't write down the, the grocery list. We've tried, we'll try not to get into that. But well, the, the, the thing that and I'll just share with you what the Lord was showing me and just dealing with my heart um, and what God is, God is doing. You remember uh, the story of the Israelites being in the wilderness. And I believe that the church is, is coming out and God's bringing us out of a wilderness mentality. And I believe that God is doing that, that we've been kind of wandering around in the wilderness. And he's bringing us out of that. You remember that there was 12 spies, that, and you can look at that in, the, in Numbers 13 and read about that. And 
And Moses had sent, you know, sent the 12 spies in to spy out the promised land. And God had promised them the promised land. That's why they call it the promised land. And, uh, and he promised that to them. And so they sent in 12 spies to kind of, you know, get it. It's good to have a plan. You know, it's not bad to have a plan. But 10 of the spies came back and said, you know, it's just like God said. It's really great, but we're not able. There's giants there, and we're just not able. And then uh, uh, Caleb and Joshua, they came back and said, yeah, you know, it's, it's great, and we can do it. Let's go do it. Let's go possess it right now. And so, you know, the, the, what, and then the, the people decided to follow the 10 bad report. And I'm sure, you know, there was, what, how many, 3 million people around that? Surely not all 3 million, rather than those two and hopefully Moses, uh, all believed they couldn't go. Surely there was a few who thought it was a good idea. But they chose to believe the doctrine of men instead of the word of the Lord. And really a doctrine of men is when they begin to believe things that, God, that men make up instead of what God said. And they abandoned the word of God. They didn't follow his promise. He said they could do it. That they were, they were able, that he would equip them to go into the promised land. And so, uh, you know, the, the people weren't willing. And, you know, I thought about that, that Caleb and Joshua believed. But because the people weren't on board, it kind of just stopped the whole show. And we can have that happen in the church. And I think that has happened in the last of 30, 40 years. Because, yeah, there's been people who have believed, but the church in, 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 as a whole has kind of just took their hands off and haven't taken their authority. Said, no, we can't do that. We can't do that. Yeah. And, you know, I, and, at, until just recently, I would say, you know, that, I, that I've looked, I thought, well, who could ever overtake the media? And yet we're seeing a shakeup in that stronghold. Who, who would ever think that Hollywood would come, you know, begin to diminish and have not the power that they used to be? Who would have thought? They're giants in the land. We can't take them. And then the doctrines of men have aided in that around the 1970, 1970s, 1980s. It was, the, it was the coming off of the charismatic renewal and people were being saved. It was a great move of God. Many people got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. It was a real move of God going on. And I think God was saying, you can take the promised land. Yeah. I really think so. And, and there were people who were saying, we can do it. We can take it. We can, we can really see this just really take off. But we looked at the giants well, how could that be? And the doctrines of men got in the way. You know, there was, there was books written uh, about 88 reasons why Jesus was coming back in 1988. And it didn't happen. And they sold millions of books. Then they wrote another, the same guy wrote another book. Well, now there's 98 reasons why he's coming back in 98. <laughs> sold more books. But what happened was people began to think, you know, we can't take the land. There's giants in the land. And so let's just step back and we'll just let the, let, then we'll just be raptured out of here. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Or we've looked and, and we've been told, you know, a lot of things about some antichrist. Well, it's just going to go, it's just going to get worse anyway. So, you know, it just is over. And the church got lazy. Anybody agree? Yeah. Amen? And we just thought, okay. And we didn't take possession. And God said, you take possession. You expand the kingdom. And so now in the last few, like five, ten years, we, even six years ago, would you believe what we're seeing unfold? There's hope that Hollywood is bowing their knee. Amen? There's hope being restored that some of these things 
uh, would, well, just what we're seeing. We ever thought that that would happen. And now we're at the promised land. Some of us, I would consider uh, Caleb and uh, Joshua. Because we've been around a while. We've heard the promises and we know we haven't seen them fulfilled. Any, any Joshua's or Caleb, you feel like that you kind of fit in that? People are I'm not going to vote. I don't know what we're voting for. <laughs> Praise God. But those are people who thought, man, there, there's some things that God's promised that we haven't seen, but we know that they're true. Amen? And we've seen them on some individual lives, you know, individual things. And I know I'm, just, I'm not getting all the scriptures in there and I lay it out, but praise God for what God's doing. And I just feel like that we are changing. There's a shift happening. That, there's a, that we're, at the, we're moving into the promised land. We're seeing some things happen. It's a fulfillment of prophecies and things beginning to happen. We're not looking for the evil one to take over. We're looking for that move of the Holy Spirit and that move of God, the expansion of the kingdom. Praise God. Who would ever thought that God would want to have an awakening in our Senate and in our, in our legislature, to have an awakening in Hollywood? I don't want, you know, I know some of us would just like to see some of the things that have come, just, just wipe them off the map, God. Let California fall in the ocean. <laughs> Praise God. Karen and, and Keaton are back so they can just go in there. But God has a desire to save people. He wants people there to get saved. So when we see things unfolding, our words should be that they would come to repentance, that they would come to know, that they would turn around. Because there's nobody that, that, you know, that... It says one sin, you're all in the same category. We're all headed to hell where there was just one. But he is forgiven. And so we want to see revival. And you know, now, you know, I'm beginning to believe they could have revival on the House of Representatives floor. Yeah. You see, that's what hope does. God never says, hey, church, go home and don't hope no more. He wants people saved and lives changed. And for the first time in my life, I can look at that. You know what? That's possible. It's possible. And with possibilities, then you by faith, you begin to take it. We're getting rid of the wilderness mentality that we are able because he has strengthened us. He has given us uh, all the tools that we need and he will, do the, he will do the fight. He just wants us to boldly take it and to declare it, and to speak it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I have a word for all those who think, you know, that you've been around a while. God's raising up a new generation. New generations. That are going to be willing to go in. That they're going to go in. You know, when, when Joshua got, and he got ready to go in, there was a big change that had happened. The people were willing to go with him. It wasn't just Joshua going in. The whole group's going. And they were willing to go in. We are in a, there's a thing happening in the, in the, in the spirit realm and in the church that churches are now, and people and believers are willing. They're willing to pray. They're beginning to pray. They're speaking out. They're declaring God's truth. This is righteousness. This isn't. There's a willingness upon, uh, on the people and the believers to say, you know what? There are giants in the land, but that doesn't mean anything. They're falling. And they were willing to go in. Because jo Joshua, they took the whole bunch in. Hallelujah. But the ones who had doubted, some of them had to die off. You know, it kind of made me sad. I thought over this last 30, 40 years, there's people who have died off. Now, let me qualify that. Some of those were Joshua's and Caleb's who were believing. But there's some old thinking that needs to die off. 
so that we can move into the land. Amen? And God's raising up a whole new generation of people who are saying, you know what, we're, gonna, we're going to fight for those things that are true. We're going to declare that the shedding of innocent blood is wrong. Amen. That abortion is wrong. Mm-hmm. Is there forgiveness? Absolutely. But it's not, it, it says that God hates that. And so there's people willing to begin to, to stand up and declare in love his truth. And that is, that is so good. That hasn't always been that way in the last 30, 40 years. Because we're just going to leave. Let the Antichrist take over. Well, I got news for you. There isn't any Antichrist. Hallelujah. Amen? You want to know more about that? Come on Wednesday night. Praise God. <laughs> there were Antichrists, and they were present in the new church, in the early church. They were agnostic. You know who the Antichrists are? People who denied Jesus Christ came in the flesh. That's who he is. That's who the Antichrist is. He's not Henry Kissinger. He's not Obama. That's what it was. We're going to talk about those things because those kinds of things have held the church back from taking the territory and getting into the promise. Praise God. And those guys who have prophesied that stuff, they, they were wrong and they rewrote it and they were wrong and they rewrote it and they were wrong. Yep. And they still sold books. And they still sold books. <laughs> you say, you're really messing with stuff. You know what? I am 63 years old. God has given me at least a seven-year plan, so you're stuck with me. <laughs> and I only have a little time to really say what I want to say. Amen. God is moving us on. We've been wrong about some things in our life, and we had to say, you know what? I had to adjust some, I had to adjust some uh, doctrine. I had to adjust some doctrine. I had to adjust some doctrine to get spirit-filled. Maybe there's some other doctrine we have to adjust and look at it and say, you know what? What is God doing? A revival in America is possible, Amen. and that is God's desire. Praise God. And so we get in line with what he is doing. And say, Lord, what are you doing? You begin to see supernatural things happen. We're seeing supernatural things unfold. Praise God. So what God, we want to look at that. Amen? Praise God. And so there's a new generation coming up. But for those who have been around for a while, I want us to look at jo- and, uh, Joshua 14. It's the last part of verse 10, and it's Caleb talking. And they've entered into the promised land. And it says, Here I am this day, 85 years old. So Caleb's 85 years old. He's standing in the promised land, just like God said he could take it. And he says, As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for for going out and for coming in. There is a strong promise. And when when Moses sent him out, it was 40 years before that. And he's saying now he's standing in the promised land as he is as strong as he is now as he was back then. There are some... Caleb's and Joshua's in this place. You've been around. You've been believing God for a long time. You've been believing for a revival. You've been believing for an awakening. You've been believing to see those miracles and those signs and those wonders that God has promised. We're entering into a promised land. And we're not going to focus on what the enemy's doing. We're going to focus on what God is doing. Amen. And he has promised. Just think about it, Vern. As young as you were when you're 40. Amen. 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 Praise, Praise God. Amen. Now, you young people, you haven't got to 40, so you don't even know how great 40 is. <laughs> you think it's bad. <laughs> Everybody over 40, you know, 40 is really good. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> 
You're, turning, you're 39, getting ready to be 40. You're going, oh man, is this the best it's going to be? Praise God. But to have that kind of strength. I think he was under 20, I think. Well, he couldn't have been 40. He would have been older. He was the only, only two of them that lived during that time that were over 20. But they never gave up. It pays to listen to God, to obey God, to walk in righteousness and holiness, to have a passion for holy things, a passion for the church, a passion to live righteously. Amen? Praise God. And this was a pro and Joshua got to, I mean uh, Caleb got to experience that. And I believe in these days ahead that those who have been standing and believing, you've been trusting God, believe also that you'll have the strength. You'll have the stamina. Because you've got wisdom and you have, you have things to impart to people. And you're going to be there to see the promise. Amen? Praise God. I don't know what Tuesday you'll hold, but I know Jesus Christ is Lord. And I know that I'm declaring he has given us this place to steward. I do not want to be the generation who hands this off to just let the devil have his way. That's right. Amen. There's fight in me. You know, that I have people, I, when you're in ministry, they always ask, what's your vision? What do you want to really see? I don't know. And you, you'll hear somebody else's vision. Oh, that sounds good. I'll adopt that, you know. And it finally, just a couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I finally know what my assignment is. And it was so simple and so easy, I was missing it. I want to see the church triumphal, victorious. More than anything else, I want to see people win. You say, well, that, that doesn't sound like God. Yes, God's win. He likes to win. He's already won. I want to see the church arise. I want to see the church arise in this community. I want to see, and I mean the church, not just faith community church, the church Amen. arise. I want us to arise, but I want to see the church arise in this community, in Barton County, in this whole area. I want to see the church stand up and be the church, to stand up and declare the truth and the word of God, not to be afraid to stand up and say, you know, God loves you and cares for you, but you're on a path of destruction. To stand up and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and his truth. And to stand up and declare that we will have a government that will cater to our culture and not the other way around. Amen. Amen. We, we cause the culture to change. Amen? Amen? Because of what we proclaim, righteousness. You wonder why there's such a skirmish going on. is because the darkness doesn't want that to happen. Because the darkness already knows it's defeated. And every time the light shines, the darkness has to step back. It can't go forward. When the light shines, it has to step back. That's just the way it is. Praise God. God has said, you are well able to go into the land. You are well able to take. You've got people in your family. You need to stand for and declare. We've had words that the prodigals are coming in. That's not a new word. That's been a word for a while. Praise God. We're, we're believing to see that. Amen? Amen? Not for another generation, not for another time, but for this generation, for this time. And I tell you what, there's things happening all across this nation. There is a turn. The body of Christ is starting to wake up Amen. and putting aside a lot of things and saying, you know what, we're going to work together because God is doing something. Praise God. And a generation, you know, the, the millennials coming up, I tell you what, they have an opportunity before them, praise God, that you know, makes us want the, the, the Caleb's and the Joshua's to be young again, to see all what they're going to see. It's been said, man, I hate to raise children in this kind of world. We'll begin to begin to speak and begin to declare that this nation will bow its knee to the things of God. Amen? Amen. Praise Jesus. And the millennials... And the young people, they have the, the anointing from the Holy One to begin to speak and to declare what kind of life and what kind of country they're going to live in. Amen? Yeah. And to begin to speak the word of truth uncompromisingly. 
Amen? This is my election, pre-election <laughs> sermon. Amen? Praise God. But it's not just about the election. It's about seeing revival in our, in our awakening. Wouldn't it be neat? You could probably think, maybe your most unfavored senator. I had several pop in my mind. But, or your most unfavored, that they really just come to know Jesus. Wouldn't it be something to see people stand up and begin to say, you know what? I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Is that in the realm of possibility? Can the giants fall? Yes. Amen. You see, God said he was restoring hope. Hope begins to take hold. And when you have hope, you begin to pull it in. Every revival that's come, people begin to pull in from hope. There's hope. There's hope when we look to our Lord and Savior. There's hope for a nation. There's hope for nations to be turned around. Amen? God told us to go out and disciple the nations. Disciple the nations. That means disciple whole people groups. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's our assignment. Our assignment is to go out and to disciple the nations. Praise God. Hallelujah. Stand with me, please. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in this time and hour. I thank you, Lord, for there is a, an unveiling of your truth. Lord God, that we're well able to take the land and to go in. And Lord, that you will strengthen us and bless us. We thank you, Lord, that to, to begin to declare those things. Lord, I thank you for every person, Lord God, that, that, that is beginning to stand up and arise in you. And Lord God, that, that you're raising up your church and you love us so much. You want to heal and deliver and set free. Lord God, you love the lost. And, and Lord God, that you love people and families. And Lord, we praise you for these things in Jesus' name. Lord God, I praise you. Thank you. I thank you, Lord, that your church is arising. Thank you. Lord God, that your church is arising. And Lord God, we expect great things. Lord, we just heard of, of three testimonies today of how of your healing power and what you're doing. Lord God, we thank you that there's going to be more and more and more of that. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.